There are other forms of um, network coding. One is called the index coding, very easy. Imagine you have the football stadium and you would like to send something to the people, right? Now, what happens if something goes wrong in your multicast, right? Imagine you have the base station, you have three packets. Huh? The first time you send packet one to everybody. So packet station number one did not get it. This happens in wireless communication. Then you send packet two and packet three and there are holes here to make it easy for you. Station three did not get packet two, three, station two did not get packet two. And so, so what should you do now? A repetition code means that you repeat all three packets. That's not a good idea. But if you look at the coding space, you have three packets here, P1, P2, P3. So let's make the same idea. We make an XOR over all three of them, very simple, and create a combination of all of them. And if this arrives to them very nicely, what you see here, great. Everybody's happy. So one packet, it doesn't matter how many people are in the station, if, they, if, they only if everybody loses one packet, I just send one linear combination afterwards and it's cleaned up if they get it. Okay, good, but if you want to make it a little bit more um, sophisticated, if you have a certain number of packets, not only three, if you have a certain number of users, let's have a look at this, right? If you have 1,000 uh, packets and um, 10 users, then you will just send out the packets and you see the, the red bar means the interest rate. So in the, in the first one, everybody will be interested, right? So I never have heard anything, send me something. In the second recovery phase, when you do this, again, not all of them are so interested because they have already some of the packets. So if you just repeat this and repeat this over and over with repetition code, then you will, it will take a while. Even if you have more um, stations here with 1000, the recovery phase will take place. So therefore, network coding kicks in. And how does it work? So imagine you have now the base station here, you have broadcast information and the base station in the system has a virtual a digital twin, so to speak, from the devices and you are sending and you get feedbacks. So for all of these car, um, virtual twins, you have a bingo card with 49 packets, so to speak. And you just mark which one did not, didn't they get. You don't need it per packet. It could be also that you make run around and say, tell me all the packets you didn't get. And then you see, okay, this guy lost five packets. This guy lost um, seven packets and this only two. And now you start to make linear combinations out of that and send them out. If this goes fine all the way, the f after two packets, this device is clean and so I'm done. Right? After five, the first one is done and then after seven, the other one is done. Therefore, the interest rate went down. Right? So coding the packets together, um, in the end, you only have one that is interested in packets six and seven. Okay? But also the, the question, which one should you really combine, right? So um, if you do the index coding instead of just repeating it, then you find out that you are sending it. The first time everybody is happy. Then in the recovery phase, if you have more than one, you will see the first one, all the remaining are happy because they get something and then it goes down because we don't code all the stations into one packet. So we started with three, then two and one. And then there are other recovery phases. Depending on the number of stations, you have different recovery phases over here. Very simple one, right? From another perspective, think about you have four packets, you have three stations over here, and you just do repetition coding. You see how long it will take until everybody has the right four packets, not only four packets, right? Because here you see he received one, two, three, four, five, six packets until he was able to decode, to, to um, get the information. There was no decoding, it's just collection. He has the four packets and say, uh, I'm done here. Actually, this guy is not even done here. Must be continue because there is no packet number four. Here we have all the four and here also. They are done, but here we have to continue. And therefore, what you do here is you make one phase where you send the packets out and after that you send out coded packets to all of them. And if you get four, any four will do the job. This is also um, the, the index coding um, as um, you have seen here. Very easy. So if you have also losses in the recovery phase, then you send more of these um, um, coded packets out until everybody has four. That's the one. There's another idea. If you just not want to multicast it, if you want to exchange it over the short range, for example, you could have a broadcast system like the, the um, systematic code here, the real packets, 
and then you code packets on the devices and you exchange it among the people in the stadium, right? And that is even more efficient than anything else. So how would this work? Um, here you see different packets and you see that um, this guy had it already, all of them. He could code all packets and just send them out. Very, very easy. There were some first ideas about that. Um, we had one group um, in Denmark where we ha always have this problem-based learning where different groups try this out. So Martin and his, his group, in this case it was only him because he was alone, was doing the implementation of Symbian and here we had the, um, a group that wanted to test out this kind of index coding, right? And we had six different phones by Nokia. They were the first phones ever on Linux based. And what you see here, the, re the red and the green, is the green ones were the packets they had and they would like to exchange them, right? And they could XOR packets. Now the question is which packets should they XOR? Always everything, um, part of it. And if you look into the, um, also YouTube, there are some nice um, first videos of it, how we did it. For example, if you have, if you download dedicated part of it and you're missing a, a, a certain part of it, or if you randomly do lose, have losses over here, you see that once he has the first part, he needs the others, and then one station would code with a coding gain of two packets together and exchange it between the devices. If you then look here in the N95, the results, what was quite interesting, if you give out around 94% to the devices and said, now you should exchange among you. So imagine the base station was able to send out the packets to the um, devices and only 6% get lost. But now they should exchange. If they would just broadcast the packets all the time, then you see how long it will take until they really reach the 100% as when, um, until everybody is happy. They always had the chance to say, I'm missing so many packets and which packets, but they hear about it, here they had to learn a little bit who needs what, then they were filling it up. But then you see what we call the coupon collector problem, you will see it later, um, you will see that ah, something is stabilizing here. And what is network coding doing? It goes up, ramps up, and only in the end there's this little dip. But you have seen the little dip already before, right? That was in the index coding when the people lose interest. So here everybody was interested because everybody had 6% losses. We cleaned this up and then a little bit, because also in the exchange we had problems. Some people were um, ready earlier than others, therefore we need a little bit more time. There's the dip. So we said, okay, everything is, is great. But if we have, this was random, so 6% losses. If we get 6% dedicated losses to all of them, then suddenly net recording was not better than the broadcast. That took us a while to understand what happened.